Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, whenever you're watching this. This is Peggy Berry Barks coming to you, and this is Orion Outreach. And I am absolutely pleased to have as my guest today, Matt Pfeiffer, the owner and president of Northern Flooring, and we're gonna talk about Operation Warm, which is an initiative he has done now for three years. And so welcome, Matt. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Peggy. You're very welcome. Well, um, Orient TV does some great stuff, and we're happy to promote wonderful things in the community. I wore my B today because, you know, be good. You do a lot of good stuff in the community. So oh. tell me about Operation Warm. Um, Operation Warm uh, basically came out, uh, well, first of all, every time we get to this time of year, I think um, many of us, uh, uh, me included, start to think uh, uh, more about what we can do to help others uh, that are in need. And uh, so, um, you know, it's been quite a few years that we've had some sort of uh, program going on, whether it be uh, to take care of family-specific uh, needs in the community um, or, um, in this case, Operation Warm, which uh, is to help as many families as possible in North Oakland County that are in need of um, some warmth in the uh, during this winter time. A lot of people still, uh, you know, are financially hurting. We were talking a bit about that uh, uh, before we went on air, and um, there's there's still a lot of uh, a lot of needs in in the, our community and communities across the nation. So, uh, you know, we believe uh, as a business, it's our responsibility to give back to the community that's um, given us our livelihood and given us so much, and we try to do that. Uh, whenever we see a need and, and Operation Warm is, uh, is from that. Um, and basically the more, the more you do and in, uh, get involved in a community, the more the community comes to you when there's a need. And that's how this uh, came. Uh, a young lady uh, out of Oxford had uh, come to me and asked if we could help because uh, she, um, she helps feed people. Uh, and it's not really, an, uh, they're organized, but it's not a specific group, just community um, grassroots uh, uh, group. And um, so they feed uh, folks up in Oxford uh, on, um, on Wednesdays when there's a need. They, they, they do that throughout the year. And uh, they've been getting a lot of requests over the last couple of years uh, for, um, for winter clothes, winter gear. Okay. So uh, they reached out to me um, a couple of years ago and said, hey, uh, we need some help. Would you consider? And of course, we're happy to do that. Um, and uh, that was the beginning of our involvement in it. And last year was uh, really the year we got going on it with some good uh, gusto and uh, um, in combination with uh, community partners and people, uh, you know, um, all of the people here in Orion, Oxford area, um, we were able to uh, help collect uh, 3,000, over 3,000 uh, winter uh, clothing items, whether it be, you know, gloves, hats, boots, jackets, uh, scarves. And, um, you know, we're looking for, uh, you know, gently used or new, um, looking for all sizes. Uh, okay. We've got, uh, you know, kids uh, and babies all the way up to, um, you know, adults uh, of all sizes. So, um, so it's, yeah. is it just outerwear or are you taking sweaters? No, we're just focused on outerwear. The reality is it's a big endeavor. Um, okay. Last year it got to the point where when we really got rolling and the community kicked in and started cleaning out their closets or uh, donating some money to help, um, we were getting so many items that um, it was a real organization challenge. Uh, Cause you know, we do this, my staff obviously helps and um, I'll have uh, volunteers that once in a while come in and just help us to try and keep it organized. And we'll turn the goods um, sometimes weekly because okay. we'll have so much. And so uh, the more items we add in, the more challenging it is to be organized and uh, to have that focus. And um, in fact, it honestly, it, it kind of um, hinders the system when people just dump bags of clothes and stuff to us because obviously we don't want that to go to waste so we have to take responsibility for it and help it find a home and go through it and sometimes people bring things that maybe aren't clean and those kinds of things and we really try to um, keep it focused so we can stay on task of what our mission is um, and there's plenty of opp um, um, opportunities to donate when you have you know uh, goodwill in our community, Salvation Army and uh, right. those are a better place for that random assortment of goods but when it comes to that winter outerwear, that's what we want. Gently used, clean, um, and new. Um, and uh, and uh, that uh, that really makes a big difference. Uh, okay, so what would help when they drop it off? 
Obviously, the drop-off point is your office, and the address on Indianwood is? 118 uh, Indianwood Road, uh, so we're just off M24. Um, very easy uh, access to get in and out of. Um, our website has our hours and location and, and, and all that, and uh, so uh, that's easily You're accessible. kind of kitty corner across from the new tire store, if I recall. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, they just built a, a, a little uh, Firestone place, uh, mm -hmm. kitty corner to us. So we're, we're real, real convenient uh, to get to. We have plenty of parking, and uh, so it's easier for people to get in and out. Good. So would it help if when they um, donate, I know this is asking a lot, but like separate hats in one bag, coats in another bag? That's awesome when people do that for us. It okay. means a lot. And, and, and don't, you know, I know best intentions, but don't just uh, just fill your bag, the bags, and figure we'll deal with it because that's really what slows us down. But, yeah, when it's separated like that, it makes a big difference because um, uh, then we can, uh, we can get quick, uh, more quickly organized and uh, get those goods to the people who need them on a, uh, on a faster, uh, uh, quicker basis. And, and if somebody does have a need, um, they can reach out to me uh, right now, um, uh, in all honesty, uh, as of this minute, I don't know where we're staging this year because uh, the location last year in Oxford uh, did uh, change, it looks like. so. Um, but they can reach out to, to you know our shop and uh, we'll let them know where okay, they can get Okay, what do you them. mean staging, as in giving it out yeah, when it's done? Yeah, as in where we have the items and when they're available. Oh, okay. Um, that's still a little bit in flux, but right now we just started collecting. So um, uh, we need to build up the, the quantity because we want when people do come in, we want them to have those options. Right. Um, so the collection starts now and goes how long? Well, you know, typically the, the idea is to go to Christmas. So it's a, we run it pretty long. But um, last year we extended into uh, uh, mid-January. And we'll probably, uh, well, I'm not going to say probably. I know we're going to do that again. Okay. Um, and the reason is, you know, people, uh, Christmas comes, people get new stuff. They might say, okay, I didn't want to give this up, but now I've got a new hat, new gloves, new jacket. We can, uh, we can donate it. That's a great and, idea. And uh, that way it can transfer on. So I like to extend it. The need continues typically. And, uh, um, but then there comes a point where we, we do shut it off. And I would say we'll probably, we'll, you know, I'd like to get as much in as soon as we can to make sure we help people as quickly as possible. But we'll have that option turned on probably till mid-January. Wonderful. So while I'm here with you, I want you to talk just a little bit about the food um, forgotten harvest that happens once a week also. Sure, just in sure. Case somebody watching doesn't know about that. Yeah, no, and it, we you know try to share that out on social media every week just to remind people that you know we um, we have a great opportunity for those in need of food. Uh, there's a lot of people that are, are again having a hard time making ends meet, and um, you know we live in a, an incredibly generous community uh, and, a, and a generous country, um, and so. Um, we work with Forgotten Harvest and Woodside Bible Church and Orion Township, and uh, we provide food, uh, groceries, for people in need. And um, we've been doing that now uh, since uh, really at the beginning of the pandemic. So we're quite a, quite a ways into it, a year and a half-ish. I, I didn't, yes. didn't count. Um, and we're there every Monday. So if somebody has a need for food, um, if you show up at Woodside Bible Church on Zoslin Road, uh, across from what is uh, soon to be the old township offices, um, you'll see us there. And I uh, recommend you get there, you know, by 8 or 8.30 and line up because we'll have uh, generally uh, a pretty good line by the time we start. And we typically start handing the food out around 9 until it's gone. And uh, that typically runs uh, less than an hour uh, these days. So, um, and it's a, it's a mix of groceries. It's not consistent because we have to, you know, we provide what's given to us. And, um, and that uh, has been getting more challenging between supply issues and inflation and the different things we all know about on the news right now. Um, we are getting less food, uh, but uh, we still are averaging in the range of about 250 families every, um, every week that come to us for, uh, for groceries. And you know, consistently, these are the same people for the most part every week. Uh, that have uh, have food shortages that we uh, we try to fill, so uh, it's a it's a um, a lot of great community um, uh, volunteers, um, you know uh, it's it's a it's a great community effort. It's a great way to start the week, uh, giving back and helping folks, and um, uh, the need is still there. Uh, it's you know a, a little less than half of what it was at the peak um, in terms of the amount of families we serve, but um, the need is definitely there. <laughs> 
Good. Well, it might be conducive to make a little tiny flyer, give to those families to let them know that they might get some have the opportunity to get some warm clothing. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, and I get, over the over the uh, time doing this, uh, you get to know a lot of our uh, our um, clients uh, or <laughs> customers, uh, patrons, if you will. And um, so we do work into a lot of conversations. And that actually, because the food um, quantities we've been receiving have really been shrinking um, as of late uh, due to shortages. Um, we've been, uh, Woodside has a pantry there that uh, you had mentioned you weren't familiar with, so it's good right. to get that word out. So that. if you are food challenged, uh, there is a pantry at Woodside and um, that's open uh, currently twice a week. Uh, and some of the same volunteers that help us with the food truck will work that, uh, that space. And it's a very nice space, a lot of variety of groceries. And um, if you have a need for food, you can go there on Wednesdays or Thursday, uh, when, I'm sorry, Mondays or Wednesdays at 1030. So right after the food truck, like last week we didn't have a lot. And we just basically, uh, we're letting people know, hey, if you, um, especially at the end, or, you know, we got down to where we just had eggs, you know, because we had gone through everything else and people, you know, got to the line like, oh, here's some eggs. Uh -huh. um, so uh, we, um, they can loop back around, wait for the pantry to open at 1030, and they can go in and get some groceries to fulfill that need. So we'll continue to work on that side and to keep that as bulked up as we can so that, um, you know, when we do have light food on the food truck, we have this other option for folks. Okay, wonderful. That is yeah. absolutely wonderful. So you are sort of a champion of um, doing all kinds of good things in the community, and I just want to acknowledge that. So uh, well, I really appreciate it, Peggy. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, winter's brutal. I'm not a fan of winter, and um, people need warm clothing. Yeah, they do. Well, I think, uh, first of all, I'm the not a fan of winter. I've, I've been a lifelong not a fan of winter uh, guy. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, we're lucky. And um, we get to, we are warm in the winter, and we yes. uh, we uh, we we're able to, you know, get what we need to eat. And um, so uh, uh, there's people who have it a lot worse. And uh, and I actually uh, a couple of years ago, I kind of uh, did a little bit of a shift and said, you know, I'm going to try this winter thing and try and embrace it a bit. And I got into hiking uh, our incredible trails, um, uh, winter and summer. But in the winter, it's a really nice time to do it. And if you dress well, um, uh, it's, uh, it can be comfortable. It's extremely beautiful in the winter because you get a different sound, almost deadens the sound. So it's yes. very calm. And um, it's a great way to uh, kind of embrace winter and, uh, and keep from getting that, that uh, kind of uh, depression that I think hits a lot of us here in Michigan in January. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know about you, but that's about the time where I started. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm already winter. there. The winter. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. you're starting yesterday. too early. It was 60 yesterday. I know. Um, but, well, uh, I was cleaning up my garden, lamenting that I won't be able to go out in the garden until the spring. So. Well, hey, you have a garden. Yeah. And you got vegetables. I've got your cans. Some Only flowers. And froze some and all of it. Only flowers. flowers. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, I, I shouldn't guess. Then. That's okay. I shouldn't guess. That's but, okay. There's not um, enough sun where I'm at to grow vegetables. That's. Uh, I do a few, but uh, not uh, not enough. It's uh, yeah. it's tricky. But um, yeah, we need. So we need we need items. And and one thing I'd like to throw out for back to the uh, the Operation Warm is um, almost everybody I meet. Uh, um, in our community ask, you know, what can they do? Um, and, and I have people who own companies that come and say, hey, how can we get involved in doing something? This is one of the easiest things that you can do to be involved in your community in terms of giving back and making a difference. And uh, you can collect for us. So if you have a business and you want to get involved, you know what we need. We're looking for gently used, clean, uh, warm clothes, hats, gloves, uh, scarves, jackets, and boots, any size. You can collect them clean them up for us and you can bring them. You can, uh, if you're in, involved in your school, you can reach out there and try and be an advocate um, for uh, people in our community that are in need. So um, we really do need the help. Um, I, uh, I don't like failing and I don't wanna fail the people that need it and I know you don't. So um, we need, uh, we need uh, as a community to come together when, these, uh, when there are needs and, and stomp them out. Let's, let's take care of people. So. Um, Anybody out there listening to this that, uh, that watches it, you can jump in and help just by simply saying, hey, we'll collect, put the word out on your social media, put it out to your family and friends. Everybody's got stuff in their closets. Yes, um, they do. And um, that stuff that's sitting in our closet that we're keeping just in case, you know, 
if you want to wear the blue one one day or something, but it's just mostly sitting there. Imagine the difference it can make for somebody who um, really doesn't have a have a jacket or have one that's in decent condition to go to church or whatever their needs are. So um, it's a great way to give back. It's a, an easy way to be involved and to give back. And um, we hope you'll join us in uh, in the fight to uh, to help warm our community and Operation Warm. Awesome. And the address again is 118 Indian Wood Indian Road. Wood Road. Right here in beautiful Lake Orion. Where? Yes. Where? Living is a vacation. Darn too. Right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Matt. My pleasure. Thanks, Peggy. Okay. You're welcome. And thank you.